Hey creators, it's me, Cynthia Gujian of Complete and Utter Mess, Inspired Mixed Media Tutorials. But today, I'm here with a free project for tinypandora.com. Let me tell you all about it. In this video, I'll show you how to make this feminine, subtle romance bangle using Tiny Pandora's Easy Bangle Kit, some scrap clay, and a little paint and some ink. I've also created a free illustrated PDF studio guide for this project. The guide contains a full materials list. It's available at www.tinypandora.com. Now, let's make a bangle. Roll out a sheet of clay 11 inches long and 3 inches wide on the thickest setting of your pasta machine. For this tutorial, about four ounces of scrap clay was used. If you don't have scrap clay, you'll need two packages of a solid color clay. Place the one inch, three quarter inch, and half inch templates on the sheet of clay. Use a clay blade to cut out all three strips. Put the three quarter inch and half inch strips aside. They'll be used later. Place the one inch strip inside the bangle form. Use a clay blade to trim the strip so that the ends meet flush. Apply a small amount of bacon bond or liquid clay over the seam and spread it out with your finger. Then cure at the manufacturer's recommended temperature. I prefer to cure mine for one hour. This is the base of your bangle. If you'd like your bracelet to have a larger opening, then place the one inch strip around the outside of the bangle form to create the base. A decorative sheet can also be used to create the base. Here, a solid color was rolled out at the thickest setting on a pasta machine. A texture sponge was used to embellish the sheet, but it could have been silk screened or created with a cane veneer. The one inch template was used to trim the textured sheet. Then, the textured strip was placed inside the bangle form with the textured side facing in. If a silk screen or cane veneer was used, then you'd want the decorated side to face in. Just as before, the strip was trimmed flush. Finally, a texture sponge was used to blend the seam. If a silk screened or cane veneer had been used, then an acrylic roller could be used to blend the seam. Once the base has cured and cooled, remove it from the bangle form. Then apply a thin layer of bacon bond or liquid clay to the top of the base. Place the three quarter inch strip that you had set aside previously over the top center of the base and trim it so that the edges are flush. Then place the half inch strip you had set aside over the center of the three quarter inch strip. You don't need to use bacon bond or liquid clay for this step. Raw clay will adhere to itself. Once you've placed this strip, trim it so that it's flush. Gently run your thumbs over the edge of the two strips. You can even wear those beautiful pink finger cards provided in the kit. Believe me, they'll get a good laugh. Work from the center toward the edge until you get a nice even dome. Then, cure the bangle at the recommended temperatures. I like to cure for a full hour. Roll out a light or medium colored clay at a medium setting on your pasta machine. 
dip a sponge into some white acrylic craft paint. Lightly sponge the paint over the veneer. Allow some of the base color to show through. Allow the white paint to dry completely and then sponge over with the second color of paint. Here, I used a turquoise color of paint. When your second color has dried, lightly sponge over with the third color. I used a light green. When the third color of paint has dried, apply some white stays on ink to a stamp and randomly stamp over the veneer. Reapply the ink as needed. I like to use stays on ink because it dries well on uncured polymer clay and this prevents smudging. When the white ink has completely dried, stamp over your veneer with a darker color of stays on ink. I used teal blue, but timber brown works well too. When the bangle has cured and cooled, apply bacon bond or liquid clay to the top of the bangle. Trim the stamped veneer to two inches wide. Then place the veneer onto the bangle. Trim the ends of the veneer so that they meet flush. Gently fold the edge of the veneer over the edge of the bangle. Work from the center to the edge, being careful to remove all air pockets. Roll over the seam with your acrylic roller to blend it. Use your clay blade to remove excess clay from inside the bangle. Place the bangle on a piece of fondant shaping foam or some craft foam and continue to refine the edges. This is a good time to double check and make sure no air bubbles are present between the veneer and the bangle. When you've finished, cure the bangle at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for about an hour. If you used a decorative sheet for your bangle base, then this is the last step. Otherwise, you'll add an inner veneer. Roll out a thin sheet of clay. This sheet will affect the inside diameter of the bangle. Thicker sheets will result in a smaller inner diameter and a smaller bracelet. Thin sheets will result in a wider inner diameter and a larger size bangle. For this tutorial, I use texture to embellish the sheet, but a silkscreen or caned veneer can be used. Once the sheet is embellished, use the one inch template to trim the sheet to fit the inside of the bangle. Then apply bacon bond or liquid clay to the inside of the bangle. Place the strip in the inside of the bangle and then trim it so that the edges meet flush. I used a texture sheet to blend the seam. If I had used a silk screened or caned veneer on the inside of the bracelet, I would have used an acrylic roller to roll the seam smooth. Trim any excess clay from the outside edge of the bangle and then cure the bangle at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for 45 minutes to an hour. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Studio Cryptique YouTube channel. The design team members have put together lots of fun and creative tutorials for you. Until next time, keep creating!